Welcome to the third episode of the how to make a VR game in Unity 6.2 course. After learning how to listen to the player's input to create this very cool hand presence, in this video we are going to learn about how to move in VR with both continuous movement and teleportation. Now, if you enjoyed this series, make sure to subscribe and leave a like down below. And don't forget, the next video will be only available on my Patreon, where we will use what we learned to make our own VR game from scratch. So, if you'd like to support the channel and get access to this exclusive content, join us. The link is in the description. But without further ado, let's get started with our tutorial. Okay, so we are where we were left at the end of last episode. So, let's get started on our first locomotion system, the continuous movement. It is pretty straightforward, with the left joystick you can move forward, and with the right joystick you can rotate. So let's see how we can set it up. The first step is to select the VR player, click on add component and search for character controllers, then press on enter, and here it is on our VR player. Now it is a bit large right now, and we can reduce its radius by changing it from 0.5 to 0.1. Finally, you can see that the height is at 2, and in my case, I'm simply going to set the center to 1 on the y-axis, so that the start of the character controllers begins at the floor right here. Now, basically, the character controller is a capsule collider with extra settings to move the player. This is a component that is used in a lot of games, not just VR game, to create movement for the player. So let's see how, with the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit, this can be managed. Now, to trigger some movement with these character controllers, we simply need to right-click on the VR player, click on Create Empty, and call this one Locomotion. Beautiful. I'm going to click on Add Component and add a Locomotion Mediator component. Now, as you can see, this has added the Locomotion Mediator, but also the XR Body Transformer, which has already referenced itself with the character controllers that we just created. The idea behind this component is to simply update this character controller position when we will move, but I will demonstrate the result in a few minutes. Okay, let's add the first movement. For this, we are going to right-click on the locomotion this time, create empty, and rename it move. Then we will click on add component and add a continuous move provider. There you go. As you can see, it needs for the first parameter the mediator that is above, and then it needs also a forward source, which will be the forward direction when we are trying to move. For this, in my case, I'm simply going to drag the main camera over there. Next, as you can see, it needs an input for the left hand and another input for the right hand. For the left hand, we can simply click over there and search for XRI left locomotion slash move. And here it is, we can double click on it. Now for the right hand move input, in my case, I'm going to click here and set it to unuse because I only want to move with the left thumbstick because the right thumbstick will be used not to move but to rotate. Now anyway, now everything should be good. We can save and click on play to find out if this works. Okay, and here you go. As you can see, it works. When I use the left thumbstick, it makes the player move in the correct direction. So everything's perfect now. And more than that, you can see that also the character controller capsule is updating with the movement as well. Okay, so now let's leave play mode. And by the way, there is some settings here on the continuous move provider. If you want to tweak this movement, for example, of course, the speed, but the straf, which allows you to move sideways, and you can even enable the fly mode. But now let's see how we can add turning on top of the movement. For this, I'm going to right click on the locomotion, create empty, call it turn. And here I'm going to click on add component and add a continuous turn provider. There it is. We can, as before, drag the locomotion mediator over there. We have some settings for the turn speed, but let's leave everything like this. And for the left hand turn input, this is already used for the movement. So I'm going to set it to unused. And for the right hand turn input, let's search again for XRI, this time right, locomotion slash turn. And here it is, we can select it. And now if I click on play, there you go. Now, as you can see with the left thumbstick, I can still move, but with the right one, I can now turn continuously. Okay, so if you already played some VR game, you know probably the next thing that I'm about to do here, because continuous turn is of course very simple and very immersive, but it can also produce some motion sickness. That's why some players prefer to use snap turn. Just to show you how to set it up, we can simply click on add component, add snap turn provider, drag the locomotion mediator, 
in use for the left hand and for the right hand, let's search for XRI right locomotion slash snap turn and here is the appropriate action let's double click on it now at this point you can simply disable the turning provider that you don't want so for example if we disable the continuous turn provider and that we save and click on play you can see that now instead of turning smoothly we always turn with a certain amount of degrees okay now in my case i will simply leave play mode and just because i prefer to have the continuous turn provider i will enable this one and just disable the snap turn provider but of course the best thing to do is to let your player decide and now we are done with our first locomotion system the continuous movement now at this point we could move on to the next locomotion system but i really want to show you something cool that is now available in the latest version of the unity xr interaction toolkit and it is the gravity and jump provider because if I click on play and then I move outside of the plane like this, as you can see, I'm falling, which is exactly what we want and which you can actually enable or not. If we go to move, you can see that there is a use gravity here that you can enable or disable if you want your player to fall. But now there is a better way to do so. If I right click on locomotion, create empty, call it gravity, add component, add a gravity provider and then drag the locomotion mediator over there as you can see using this provider we have a lot more settings to control the gravity you can make the gravity local and you have some better control over the detection of the gravity or not with here a sphere casting so i strongly encourage you to use this one and not the default one on the move component but if you want to make it work the first thing to do is to set the transformation priority to something high like 10 this will make sure that the gravity will apply after the movement and finally you need to go to vr player and for the layer make sure to set it to ignore raycast then set to no this object only to only apply this new layer to this game object and not its children setting the vr player layer to ignore raycast will make sure that for the gravity the sphere casting that is done to check if we are grounded or not will not take into consideration the capsule of the player. Okay, and finally, now that we have the gravity provider, we can right click, create empty, rename it jump, and here add a jump provider and drag the locomotion mediator over there. Now for the jump input, we can, as before, search for XRI right locomotion slash jump. There we go. Now let me highlight this action over there by clicking on it and drag it for second action again. And now, as you can guess by the name, the jump provider will allow us to jump. Now you can, of course, change the inputs to the jumping, but right now, by default, it is set to the A button on the right controller. So let's see all this looks by clicking on play. And there you go, guys. As you can see, it's pretty cool. We can now move, turn, use gravity and even jump with this movement. But now, it is time for our second locomotion system, which is the teleportation. So let's leave play mode and see how we can enable it. Okay, so the first step to set up teleportation is again, right clicking in the locomotion, create empty. And this time we are going to create a teleportation provider. So let's click on add component and add the teleportation provider component. Now, as you can see, this component is very simple. We can simply drag the mediator over there and the reason why this component is very simple is that most of the thing that you can tweak for teleportation is not done on the teleportation provider, but on the ray that will trigger the teleportation. Now, if we go to samples, XR interaction toolkit, the version that we have, so 3.2.1 for me, starter assets, and then prefab, you should see here the interactors folder that we can double click on. And here you should see the teleport interactor. So let's simply drag it under the right hand on our VR player. We can reset its position to 0, 0, 0. Beautiful. Now this teleport interactor is a game object already pre-configured for us to trigger the teleportation. It contains a ray interactor that will be able to point a certain location that we want to teleport at. Down below, you have the line renderer used to display the ray, and here, the XR interactor line visual used to tweak how this line will appear. Now, to make it work, we just have a few steps to do. The first one is to set the endedness from none to right. And finally, here, we have the input configuration, which are used to trigger when we teleport or not. In our case, I'm going to click here, select XRI right locomotion, teleport mode over there, 
Let's actually highlight it again and drag this same over there down below. And with this, our XRay Interactor component is already set up. Now let's see if I click on play. As you can see, I have a ray that is coming out of my right hand, but the ray is completely red. And the reason is pretty simple. It's because we do have a teleport interactor to find some place where we can teleport, but we don't have any teleportation area that accept this ray. To create a teleport area, we can, for example, select our plane here, go to add component and search for teleportation area. There you go. Now on the colliders list, we can drag the mesh colliders over there. For the distance calculation mode, we can set it to collider volume. And last but not least, just above, the interaction layer mask should be set not to default, but to teleport. So let's first select teleport and here click again and disable default. So only teleport shows here. And now let's see if I click on play. Look at that, it works. The ray now turns blue and it accepts the plane as a teleportation area. And now if I position my right thumbstick forward, as you can see, it teleports me to the correct destination. But there is only one issue right now. As you can see, the ray always shows the teleportation is always active, which is something we don't want. So to fix this, we are going to simply activate or not the teleportation when the user press on the button. Okay, for this, when we leave play mode, we can simply select the right hand and I'm going to add a component called teleportation activator. There you go. We can press on enter, create an add and save our script anywhere on our project. Now, if we double click on this script to open it. Now on this script, we simply need to go add the top and add a reference to the unity engine dot input system namespace and another reference to the unity engine dot XR dot interaction dot toolkit dot interactors, which will allow us to access our ray interactor used for the teleportation. Once that's done, we can get first the XR ray by doing public XR ray interactor teleport interactor. And then let's do public input action property with teleport activator action. There you go. Now at the start of the game, we can disable the teleport interactor with teleport interactor dot game object dot selective false. And now here the idea is to listen to this action to only activate the teleport interactor when this action is performed. Now, if you remember, if I go back to Unity, in the last episode, we use here the input test component to actually be able to listen to the action. And we were able to listen to the value of these two actions. But there is another way to listen if an action is performed or not in another way that to getting this value and it is using event. So let me show you how we can actually do this. If I go back to the teleportation activator, we can listen if this action is performed by doing teleport activator action dot action dot perform. And here let's write plus equals. And normally you should have something like this being proposed by Visual Studio. And if we press on tab, it should auto complete by creating a new function called action perform that will be automatically triggered when the teleportation activator action is performed. Now, in our case, what we want to do is on this function, remove this line of code and write teleport interactor dot game object dot selective true. And there we go. This way, when the action will be performed, it will call this function that will activate the teleport interactor. And now simply, if we want to disable the teleportation when the user doesn't press on the button in the update function, we can do if teleport activator action dot action dot was release this frame. So if the action is released, we can simply set back the teleport interactor game object to false and disable it. And there we go, with this script, we should only be able to activate or not the teleportation when the action is performed. So let's save, go back to Unity, go to our right hand, drag the teleport interactor for the teleport interactor. And for the teleport activator action, let's set it to use reference and search for XRI right locomotion slash teleport mode. So this one. And now if we save and that we click on play, 
And there we go, as you can see, the teleportation arc is not showing anymore, but when we press forward on the right thumbstick, it shows again, and now everything works better. We both have continuous movement and teleportation working at the same time on our VR player, and everything seems to be good. Okay, and we are almost done with our tutorials, but there is one last thing that I want to show you, because if we select our plane, you can see that we were able to turn this collider into a teleportation area using the teleportation area component. But if you don't like to have a free teleportation area and force the teleportation in a particular point, you can do so with a teleportation anchor. Just to show you an example, we can search in the project window for teleport anchor. Here, make sure that the search is set to all, otherwise you won't see it. And there you go. Now we can set this particular game object directly in our scene and we can move it forward like this. Now, as you can see, this component is very simple, like the teleportation area. But once the player interacts with it, it will force the destination of the teleportation to be here, this anchor, which is this exact child position. So let's see how this works by clicking on play. And there you go. Now, as you can see, no matter what we do, when we interact with this teleport anchor, we are forced to a certain position, but also to a certain rotation. And actually, this rotation can be set directly here. As you can see on the teleportation configuration, you can see that the match orientation it's, is set to target up and forward. This will make sure that the player face forward in the same blue direction that this one. And there you go, this sums up everything that I wanted to show you with locomotion in VR with both the continuous movement and the teleportation. And there you go guys, in one video we learned about the two main locomotion systems in VR and how to use them both. Hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for sticking till the end. Don't forget that our next episode will be only available on Patreon where we will build a VR game from scratch using what we learn. So, if you'd like to support the channel, get the source code of this project and exclusive content, join us, the link is in the description. Thank you for watching and see you very soon, bye bye!